wink. <laughs> well, I have a lot of fun here at KXSC. Also, www.kxsc.org. Don't forget, you miss all this Conrad's Corner action or any of it, whatever. To make sure to go online. It's all there waiting for you. Just go to www.conradscornerusc.com. And we have had over 100 and what, what's the numbers? 100 and, yeah, 125. 125 guests. We have had, I think we got over 220 or so segments, interviews, clips for you. And amazing. And I think our YouTube view count is on its way to 13,000. So there, a lot of people have been listening, and I'm sure you've been one of them if you're listening live. And we really do appreciate your support and hope the Conrad's Corner continues to be a part of your Tuesday mornings. So one of our top stories here on the radio show has to do with Monica Valencia, who is a junior sociology major, human rights minor, so interesting combo there. And we're going to have the pre-recording interview up in just a second. Uh, we definitely have to say Monica is one of the seven recipients of the Melon Mays Fellowship Award, which uh, is national recognition allows her to uh, have a, an opportunity this summer to study what she wants. And Melon Mays is basically, this fellowship is for aspiring professors. She's trying to get a PhD. And considering where she came from and the obstacles that she's had to face, not just in the military, but also considering you know a family socioeconomic class, growing up and all that. I mean, Monica is defying the odds. And when you defy the odds, you come on Conrad's Corner. That's what she did. And here's the interview with Monica Valencia. And welcome inside the Annenberg Radio News Studio. This is Conrad Wilton, of course, and I am alongside Monica Valencia, who is a junior sociology major, human rights minor. Awesome combination, just talking about that. She's one of seven recipients of the National Mellon Mays Fellowship Award. And Monica, I want to thank you for coming on Conrad's Corner. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. So you actually made national history, or USC history at least, being the, uh, <laughs> the first female veteran to win this fellowship award. And this is all about research and things like that. What's it like to be the first female veteran? Do you feel prouder, if you will? <laughs> a, little, a little bit more of a skip to your step. <laughs> uh, definitely a skip to my step. Um, you, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible to, to receive this award and to be the first um, veteran uh, in this uh, cohort in, in its entirety so right do you know how long the award has been around for is it fairly recent or uh you know what i'm not sure on the specific dates right. but um i know that usc has been participating with this program for a while um but there's different schools that participate participate during uh or for the program itself and right. so so a lot of so in other words a lot of people have had the opportunity to get this award. None of them have been, have been female veterans in the past. You are are you the first female veteran or the first veteran the to get it? The first veteran. Whoa, <laughs> look out now. So yeah, representing the armed forces, the air force to yes, be the most specific. Air force. Why air force? You know, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, I actually initially went into interview for the Marine Corps mm -hmm. and my brother really just convinced me to go to the Marine Corps and um, I, I took the test, and then after I thought about it, I just realized uh, the Air Force would be a better fit for me. So flying around and all that. <laughs> it's got to be, I mean, Marines, Army, Navy, Air Force, the training is unbelievable. Definitely. What is unique to the Air Force training? Is it longer? Is it shorter than the other fields, would you say? Um, I don't know if it's, if it's uh, longer. It probably is a little bit shorter. Uh, the, the difference between the Air Force and uh, the other branches is that... Um, you have to take an extra test to get in, and you have to score a little higher. Um, so I think that was one of the, the, the things Interesting. that just caught my eye. So you guys got the brains, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're flying above everybody, so it makes sense <laughs> for the most part. But interesting, so you are, so the, the Fellowship Award is an opportunity. You get a stipend, I believe, this summer to conduct research in the field of your choice, correct? Right. Okay. And so what research are you going to be conducting this summer? Um, actually, I will be conducting research with uh, an immigrant population in Ventura County. County, which is the Oaxacan uh, indigenous population okay. um, who are migrants here uh, to the U.S. and um, how the, the negative context of reception affect their upward mobility. And um, with, what I mean by that is um, how discrimination and racism um, affects their way of life and, and their upward mo mobility. Um, so that's, that's always been an interest of mine. And so I, I'm excited to do the research this summer. Now, would you say that, just, that you personally... Uh, be, be, being a woman in the, in the military, I, I can't imagine how this didn't happen, unfortunately. But were you a victim of discrimination? I guess more so discrimination than, than racism, or perhaps both in the military. What would you say? Um, 
You know what? I have to say yes. Yeah. Let's, let's keep it real. You spent six years there. <laughs> so I'm sure there's real. one time that, that something might have happened that right. wasn't on the up and up. Yes. Right? But, but, but yes. tell me more. Um, well, first of all, being female and being, you know, being in the armed forces, uh, that's a whole, that's a whole issue in itself. Right. Um, so, you know, we have to deal with certain things that come with, you know, being a female in the military. Um, and I'll just, you know, say something like, um, you know, sexual advantages, uh, well, yes. know, that kind of yeah. stuff. I think there's a reason why originally there are more males in the military. I think f- for females, it's it's never really been a, it's always been a male-dominated field. Right. Always, I- even to this day, of course. Right. And so you going into it, tell me, how, how, how were you received? You know, how did you earn respect? Because you lasted six years, you went abroad, South Korea, Germany, so you were very successful. Right. Um, you know, Lasting, that's that's a, that's a good word. Um, it's all about earning respect and earning your place, especially in the career field that I went into, which was uh, security forces, uh, which is the equivalent of being military police. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, uh, it's kind of like being part of the guy club. You know, it's getting accepted and right. um, being validated in a way. Um, so for me, um, the way that I earned my respect was just basically... Um, Doing my job, uh, scoring high where I needed to, and you know, in the academic portion of it, and also the practical element, and um, you know, showing presence, showing that command, uh, showing that confidence that I deserve to be there, just as much as anybody else, regardless of my gender. Now, there was a Daily Trojan article that was actually published about you today, which is Monday when we're recording this. Tomorrow will be Tuesday, so it'll be yesterday when everyone hears it. Or probably even more days down the line when they look on it online, but that's a whole other whole <laughs> deal. But I have, to, I have to ask, so I remember I was interviewing you, of course, and you told me that as a woman, you had to do things five times better than a male to get that respect. Right. Tell me a little bit about that. How did you have to overachieve to gain respect and be accepted into the organization? Um, One of the ways was um, firing your weapon, for example. You go to training, you have to qualify on different weapons, different training um, elements. And so uh, if you you know, if you study, and if you know what you're doing, you're going to score high enough. And, you know, you get uh, recognition for a lot of those things. Right. I actually was an expert marksman f- with the rifle. Um, I and I remember As with the Air Force? With the Air Force. So you still have to go through that. Okay. Right. Right. And so um, I was able to uh, beat out a lot, of, a lot of the guys, a lot of my, my comrades who uh, couldn't get expert. So that was a big accomplishment for me in itself. Um, and then, like I said, just uh, getting awards and qualifying and, and uh, getting, uh, getting high... high um, high rankings in, in your uh, qualifications. It's just doing what you do, but doing it really, really well. Exactly. Right. And how about some of the other women that you dealt with? Were they as good as you? Or did you sort of pal around and, and sort of <laughs> have a session at four in the morning say, okay, <laughs> let's be real with each other here. And so did you, well, what happened with that? You know what? I was lucky enough to go to have um, a really, really competitive cohort um, with with me throughout my throughout my tenure in the, in the Air Force. Um, you know, I, I had some some bad, some some really cool girls uh, that I, see. I served with. <laughs> well, I was going to say a different word, but uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I guess you have to be though. You have to have that type of an attitude, right? You have that swagger, the confidence. Exactly. Tell me about that. Exactly, confidence. Yeah. You know, if if you don't have confidence, you're you, you're definitely not going to go very far, um, especially being a cop in the military. Right. Um, confidence. Is, is definitely needed, especially for women. Uh, and if you don't have it, you might as well, you know, cross trade into a different career field. Honestly. Right. So you did spend. You spent six years. Not all of them abroad. Three of them in North Dakota. Mm-hmm. So tell me, what did you do in North Dakota? <laughs> oh, for three the highlight years. of my day. The three. Hi- I couldn't spend three days. Three years. Oh man. Tell me about it. Just just thinking of North Dakota right now makes me want to cry. But um, it was cold, I suppose. Definitely. Yeah. I think there was times <laughs> where uh, I think it got negative sixty with. Including wow. wind chill, it's like uh, Alaska weather, blizzards, you know, the works. Mm-hmm. So, um, how did you do it? How did you stay? I mean, for three years, how did you stay focused? You know, um, I had my my family come visit a lot. Uh, um, I made a, a good group of friends, and so we were able to kind of keep each other afloat. Because mm-hmm. um, it really is, you know, a, 
uh, North Dakota is. It's almost <laughs> as if that's the battle. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. I mean, you, we'll talk a little bit about South Korea and Germany, and obviously it's just a tad bit more dangerous over there, but you're fighting the elements in North, North Dakota. Right. So. Definitely.